My name is Bob Quick. I'm uh, based in Dublin in Ireland and I look after Ledium's business for Europe, the Middle East and Africa. Um, Ledium, uh, their core business, I guess, is self-service passenger automation in airports. So kiosk, bag drop, e-gates and all of the hardware and software that support that. And uh, recently we've moved into health screening technology and I'll, I'll touch on that very, uh, very briefly. Um, so just on the next slide. You know, looking at, uh, at where we are with the pandemic, uh, I guess it's important to note we are still, still in the middle of it and, uh, and Europe and, and the US are, are uh, suffering with the current wave. Uh, congratulations, I guess, to the Australians for, for coming out of it. But we're still looking at uh, the latest numbers I had. It's, it's, uh, I looked it up, it's 1.17 million deaths uh, from COVID, which is uh, obviously a, a staggering loss of life. Um, looking at the, the image here, you can see uh, the Spanish flu uh, sort of towards the back of it, um, you know, 40 to 50 million deaths. And it was about 100 years ago. So there's a lot of references between the Spanish flu uh, situation and COVID now. But it's interesting to see the, the various pandemics between now and then. Uh, obviously, AIDS is, is uh, enormous in, in that picture. Um, and you've got uh, the Asian and Hong Kong flu in the, uh, the early part, part of last century. What I think is most interesting is in the last 25 years, the number of pandemics that we've seen, uh, SARS, the swine flu, MERS, Ebola, also the West Nile virus. Um, and, and unfortunately, as, as uh, Rene was saying, it, it, uh, this isn't going away. And the, the view of the, the medical and aviation industry is that we need to be prepared uh, continuously for, um, for dealing with this pandemic, but also dealing with the next pandemic. So I guess on the, uh, the downside of, of the post-COVID world is, you know, just like 9-11 changed security, uh, COVID will change the, uh, the pandemic threat uh, for the, the airport journey. And it is something that we'll have to, to include in the airport process uh, going forward. I guess on a more positive note, you know, a lot of the, the nice trends and the cool trends that we've seen are also forecasted to continue. So in addition to expecting um, improved health screening at airports, uh, we'd also expect to get a uh, better touch of experience and, and really the view there is that we shouldn't have to touch anything uh, in the airport journey as we go through the, um, the, the get arriving at the airport and boarding the aircraft. Uh, self-service is, is a huge trend in the industry but still lots of, of room to, to implement more self-service and already we're seeing airports moving towards uh, things like automated backdrop to remove the need to have staff or as many staff in the airport to accommodate the, the ups and downs in the traffic and also to implement a touchless experience. Um, mobile phone is an important part of that touchless journey, whether it's operating completely on your mobile phone or you use your mobile phone as part of the, the self-service experience. And you know, I think we all know there are still lots and lots of opportunities for digitization in the airport journey. And I'll touch on that uh, a little more soon uh, in, in, uh, shortly, but I'm sure we've all seen uh, so many opportunities for us to, to make the journey easier using some digital technology. On the next slide, um, we at Enium are, are fortunate to have um, business outside of the air transport and we've implemented some of our, our technologies there. And one of the issues we have in the aviation uh, business is passenger volumes are so low, it's really difficult to see what the experience is like using these new technologies. Uh, so we're just looking outside of aviation, we have a, a project uh, or an implementation at a Meatworks facility in, uh, in Australia. And that's where we have lots of people going to work and uh, using this new self-service technology. So it's interesting to see what, what are those experiences like and what lessons can we take from, uh, from outside the air transport industry and apply those to what the world will be like, uh, hopefully uh, post COVID in, uh, in aviation. So firstly, the, the touchless experience, um, again, implementing it en masse has, has been very positive. We, we use head movement detection to do touchless technology and, uh, and people find it very intuitive once they've used it um, just briefly, it becomes a natural way to interact with the self-service device. And also the notion of screening people's health. Um, it can be a, contra a controversial concept. Do you want to check people's health? And the feedback from the, the employees was, was very positive. They liked the feeling of the technology scanning them. They thought it was cool, but they also liked the, the assurance of going to work and knowing that they, they were safe but also knowing that all of their colleagues and people they're working with don't have any, uh, any illnesses. The other interesting element with all this talk about touchless and, uh, and mobile phones is we gave uh, the, um, the employees a choice between using the touchless technology or using their mobile phone to answer some screening questions. 
that's interesting. The majority certainly prefer to use their mobile phone beforehand. Um, but over a, a period of time, there was still a significant minority who preferred not to use their phone. So about 40% still wanted to use the touch as technology and given the choice, preferred not to use their mobile phone. Um, which is, I think, an like, interesting learning for us in the, uh, in the aviation industry. Just I've got a short video on the next slide, uh, if you can uh, play that. Um, there's no, well, there is audio. The audio is a bird singing. But you can see here the person using the touches technology and the yellow cursor uh, is corresponding to the head movement. Here they're just checking the person's health. And again, you can see it's, it's within seconds that the health is screened. But the interesting bit is how they uh, use the head movement detection for interacting with the self-service device. Again, the yellow arrow is corresponds to the cursor, says to move the head, the cursor moves, and then when you hover, it, uh, it registers as a click. You can see that they read the question and then answer yes or no, and there's no touching at all of the device, and it's a, it's a quick process. The next frame, uh, you can see they're doing the exact same thing, but this time it's with the mobile phone. Same questions answered, uh, again, touching the phone instead of the uh, self-service device. It's, it's slightly faster, but not, uh, not significantly so. And again, it produces a 2D barcode. And that's a really simple way of interacting and doing a handover between the mobile phone and the, uh, the self-service device. Again, quick health check and, uh, and the person's on the way. So looking beyond, uh, beyond the, the, uh, the technology and back into to aviation, you know, we see that the, the check-in experience will, will really become no more. Uh, when's the last time we went to an airport and bought a ticket for a flight? I mean, we wouldn't dream of going to an airport and buying a, a ticket for a flight. We would always buy it at home or, or in the office. And the same with check-in. Uh, already, the, the majority of us will check in online, and that will just become normal. So we go to the airport, and the experience will be you screening. So you drop off your bag, the bag gets screened, and you, you go through some kind of screening process for health and for, for security. Again, as 9-11 changed security, COVID is changing screening. So we will have this health screening as part of the process. As Rene said, biometrics will underpin all of this and, and streamline the journey. And we'll also have a, the touchless will be an, an uh, ever present part of this. But also these processes will get more intelligent. The bag drop process already, airlines are, are quite dynamic in changing their pricing. As some airlines are currently talking about pushing all baggage to be checked in. So the screening is, is more touchless, but that will eventually change. So you need to have that dynamic um, way of dealing with, uh, with bag drop. And similarly, we need you know, near real-time intelligence on the risk of, of uh, pandemics as we do our screening. So we can adjust and adapt how, how rigorously we, we do the screening and what degree of testing we do based on known risks. Uh, and again, using that with, uh, with artificial intelligence and real-time information. So on the next slide, we, uh, we look now at the, the airside experience and, and really the whole airport experience is going to move to airside. The, uh, the, the screening experience will, will bring us into a, a much richer uh, airside experience. Um, so when passengers go to uh, arrive at the airport, it's interesting, only 60% of passengers have a boarding pass for their entire flight so far. Um, and additionally, only 60% only know who to contact if something goes wrong during the journey. So again, it's ripe there for a level of automation once you go airside. And the same with disruptions, you know, pre-COVID, 50% of passengers have had uh, issues with uh, disruption in the last 12 months, which I don't think would surprise anyone. And again, when you're, when you're airside and you're waiting for your, waiting for your flight, about 30% of people want to be able to buy last minute um, purchases such as seat upgrades or, or lounge assets and so on. And really there's, there's very limited experience so the, the airside experience is ripe for disruption and ripe for, for digital disruption and ripe for, for improvement with automation. And so the first thing we need to do is better automate disruptions using self-service technology and better mobile phone applications. Um, airport transfers are, are usually a hassle. It's the number one thing people, uh, passengers complain about. So we need to figure out how to improve the, the airport transfer experience, again, with self-service and, uh, and automation. And retail shopping, while many airports have you know, beautiful shopping areas that, that feel like a, a luxury shopping mall, there really is a very limited amount of um, digital disruption in, in the retail shopping experience. So just on the, uh, on the next slide, Peter. Um, there's a lot of technologies now that are becoming more, more pervasive and more easily available to improve the passenger's experience in the airport. 
and, and not incidentally to also improve the, the revenues for airports and airlines. So you saw the handover between the, the mobile phone using a 2D barcode um, with the self-service device earlier. The exact same technology works for doing a payment with your mobile phone. And it really allows a whole variety of self-service devices to become payment devices without the expense of the chip and pin unit. Similarly, you know, if you go to a gate at, uh, at almost every airport, there's no way for an agent at the gate to take a credit card payment because that multi-merchant payment infrastructure isn't in place. Again, if you want to do a last minute seat upgrade, uh, a last minute change to, to business or first class, you can't do it or pay for it at the gate. Similarly, there's been trials taking place and I've got a video on the next slide of, of a proof of concept of, well, if you, if you just want, don't mind going back, Peter, we'll, I'll do the video in a second. Um, the, there's an opportunity for virtual retail. So whether, whether that is augmenting additional retail, so you go to, to an electronic store in the airport, they don't have what you want, but you can still buy it and get it shipped to your home or your hotel. Or some airports are trialing using virtual shopping areas in maybe constrained areas or, or sort of piers, maybe at the gate. So you're at the gate, then you decide to buy duty-free. Rather than walking all the way back, you can go to the, to the virtual retail. And using this now ever present uh, biometrics that we will, we will eventually get, there's a significant opportunity to, to pay with your face. So that allows hybrid retail. It allows you, for example, to do in-flight shopping before you fly. Um, so you can browse the, the electronic catalog for your airline and do the purchases. You get the goods on board or potentially when you, when you, allow, when you arrive. A lot of opportunity for last minute seat upgrades. And I always say to, to airlines, you know, last minute seat upgrades is free money for the airlines. Um, so if you want to, to move to an exit row, change your seat, move into business class, no one's going to do it um, when they're on board. So this is the ideal time to get that last minute revenue. And then you're sitting at the gate and you're thinking, oh, when I arrive, I'm going to have to get a taxi. I'm going to have to get to my hotel. What entertainment is there? Should I book a dinner uh, reservation, et cetera? So there's a lot of opportunities for those kind of commercial um, uh, retail as well. So just on the next slide, uh, thanks, Peter. Hopefully the audio will work and you can see the, uh, you might need to click on play. I'm going to make my way through the doing free and purchase something. Hello, Mr. Hornliner. Welcome to Duty Free. Please tell me or tap on the item you would like to purchase. I'd like the notebook and pen, please. Okay, great. You selected the notebook and pen. Would you like it delivered to your home or hotel? To my hotel, please. We are sending your Duty Free purchase to your hotel. We have your payment details and have charged your Visa credit card ending 5478. A purchase summary will appear on your app. So there you see just a simple illustration of, uh, of how biometrics and virtual shopping can be integrated. And this, of course, can be positioned anywhere in the airport. It's better experience for the passenger and also retail opportunities for, uh, for the airport or the airline. So just on the last slide, uh, Peter. So I, I love this quote, uh, COVID will accelerate history rather than reshape it. And that's really what we're seeing. And I think it's one of the trends we're seeing in this, in this webinar is you know, the, the trends that existed earlier. And, and in fact, even the technology to check people's health, Alini was already doing that with Etihad. And the use case that they had was uh, sick people on a flight. Uh, it's very expensive if someone gets sick on an aircraft to deal with that process. So already these trends of these technologies were, were already in place. But I think COVID is driving the, uh, the acceleration of, uh, of these technologies. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much.